In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make two, yes, two different types of dot plots in Excel. Now, dot plots aren't built in chart types in Excel, so we do need to be a little creative to make them. These are the two we are going to make today, a Cleveland dot plot and a connected dot plot. So if we're all ready, let's jump in. Hi, I'm Simon, one of the data storytellers here at the team. And let's start off by understanding what is a dot plot. Now, the term dot plot can actually be used for any graph or chart where we are encoding the data with a dot or a circle. The original dot plot shows a distribution of data. So similar in some ways to a histogram, a more common type of dot plot nowadays, especially in a business setting, is what is known as a Cleveland dot plot. Now, this was developed by a man called William J. Cleveland, and we can use this graph to show our data across different categories. One way to think about it is a alternative to a bar chart, and you can see here how we can transition from those bars to this Cleveland dot plot. An additional common variation is the connected dot plot. It functions in the same way as the Cleveland dot plot, but this allows you to add two or more data series. And now you build the additional element of this connecting piece, usually a line. And this connection emphasizes the difference between the two or more dots. So today I'm going to take you through the steps to make both the Cleveland dot plot and the connected dot plot in Excel. We will build each of these from the ground up, starting with the base data and making our charts and going through all the different formatting steps as well. Finally, stick around to the end of the video and we will use a different method to build a connected dot plot. Right, let's take a look at the data very quickly. So this is our data, completely made up data, focusing on two different car companies, the Dulux and the Compact Car Companies. And what they have done, they have offered a number of people the opportunity to test drive their cars. And those people have come back and rated the cars across a number of different categories that you can see here. So what we have here is the responses from those clients in column C and D. Column B is where we're gonna position the data on our Y axis. Okay, that's the data. Let's step in and make our first chart. Okay, let's make our Cleveland dot plot. First thing we're gonna do is insert a chart. So let's go to insert charts and we're gonna pick a scatter plot. There are no built-in dot plots here, as I mentioned earlier on. So let's insert a scatter plot. Just gonna position this here. Yes, so we have a blank graph, but we have no data in it. Let's correct that now. So we can click on our graph and we can select chart design, select data. Or we could simply right click on the graph and hit select data. Both will do exactly the same thing. So now let's add a data series using the plus button here. First series we're going to add is the compact cars. So in the name, we can either type compact cars or we can just click the cell here. Our X values are gonna be our survey responses and our Y values are going to be our category positions. Let's put those on and we have our first set of dots. Let's add our second set, our Dulux cards. Same process, select data, add our series two, and our name is gonna be Dulux cards. Our X values will be the responses, and our Y values will be our category positions. Let's add those on as well. Okay, so we've got our data in, a little bit more formatting required to create our Cleveland dot plot. Let's get round to that now. So let's look at the markers first. I'm gonna hit uh, left click on the first data series, our compact cars. And you'll see, or you should see, a format data series window come up. If you don't, you can right click and you can hit format data series. So we're gonna do a few things with the markers. We're gonna select the paint bucket tool. We're gonna to select marker options. And then within marker options, we will choose built-in and just change the size to 50. For a fill color, let's choose a slightly different color. We'll go with this blue and we'll also select no line for the border. And let's do something similar for the second data series, our Dulux cards. Again, marker, built-in, size of 15, solid fill, and we'll pick this light orange, again with no border. That gets us our data markers in a nice place. Let's now turn our attention to our axis. So we have our Y axis first. So first thing you'll see is the grid lines for our Y axis don't actually go through our dots. We need to correct that to create the Cleveland dot plot. So let's fix that. So we can click on the axis and then on the right hand side, the former axis pane within this graph palette here, you'll see bounds. What we're going to do is change the minimum bounds to 0.5. That gives us that place where our lines, our grid lines now cross through our circles. We can also change our maximum to 7.0 as well, which just 
regulates the chart. The next thing we're going to do is move the X axis at the bottom up to the top. And that actually is done through our Y axis. So you can see here horizontal axis crosses. Currently it says automatic. What we want to do is change it to maximum axis value. And what that is essentially saying is we want our X axis, our horizontal axis to cross our vertical axis at the highest point, our maximum value, in which case it's seven. 0. So we'll do that and that moves it up to the top. One more thing we can do on the Y axis, we can just fade the color by choosing white. We don't need to see those numbers. On the X axis, a couple of things to do here. First of all, the survey scale is from 1 to 10, not 0 to 10. So let's change that. So we can click on our axis, we can click the graph icon, axis options and change our minimum bounds up to 1. That gives us that scale. We can also add tick marks. If they're not uh, currently on, you can go to tick marks and select major type outside and that gets the tick marks showing there. That's pretty much it. I'm just gonna add now our chart title and our category labels. I'm gonna do this at the moment with the use of text boxes. So those text boxes are now on. We finished our Cleveland dot plot, our first dot plot of our tutorial today. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to give that like button a tap. Let's move on to the connected dot plot. To build the connected dot plot, we're going to start from where we finished the last lesson with our Cleveland dot plot. And we've added two more columns of data here, a minimum bar and a maximum bar. Now the values in these, they represent the minimum and the maximum values for the different categories. What you will notice though, is that they've been put in in reverse. So you can see here for handling, we have a minimum value of five compact cars and a maximum value of nine you'll see those values have been entered here. We have to do that because of the way Excel encodes the data when we load it in. As another example, you can see safety, maximum value of nine, minimum value of three, and we put that here, three and nine. Let's add the data in. It will make a lot more sense when we can start to visualize it. So let's add our minimum bar in. So normal process, right click the chart, select data, add a data series, minimum bar, or we can of course click X values and Y values. Okay. Now you'll see here, we've got a series of dots and that's fine because it's a scatter chart after all. So we just need to change that. So we can click on these dots, any one of them, right click, change chart type column. And then we're going to select this horizontal column here. Now, as you can see, we've got some bars on here. That's a good start, but they're kind of in ascending order. So something doesn't seem quite right. And this again is due to the way that Excel will load this data in. And actually what we need to do is reverse our Y and our X axis. So let's go back into our data and make that change now. So right click, select data. And you'll see here when we click the minimum bar, because it's now a bar chart, it's changed the options we have. So what we actually need to do is just reverse our Y and our X values. So our Y values are actually now going to be our values for our responses. And our X values, our horizontal axis categories are going to be the positions for our categories. Now it's turned the data series white. Let's fill that in. It still doesn't look quite right. And the reason for this is because of the extra axis we've added in, you can see it doesn't line up. We go from one to 10 at the top, our original dot plot axis, but we're going from zero to eight at the bottom. So we need to make sure that's aligned. So let's click on our axis, click on our bounds and under axis options, and we just synchronize one to 10. And now it's starting to look better. Our gray bars now match the minimum dot within each category. Let's now look at adding our maximum bar. So we can do the same thing, select data, plus name, maximum bar, X values. Now we know it's actually gonna be the category position. Y values, we know it's going to be the values of our responses. Hit okay, that's adding the dots again, changing the chart type to column gives us bars like this. And already that looks better, doesn't it, than what we had previously. So now we have these light gray bars and they're going to the maximum values 
of the dots, as you can see. So now we've pretty much there. I just need to do, again, a little bit of formatting, starting with where these bars are appearing. As you can see, currently, they're not quite in sync with the dots. So for that, we need to change the axis. So selecting the axis here, I'm just going to turn on the color again so we can see it. What we need to do here is within our bounds, just make the minimum back to zero. And that now spaces our bars out nicely, synchronizing with our dots. That's looking good. Now we've got two bars. How do we overlap them? So it's only showing one bar in effect. Well, that's very simple. We can click one of the bars. The options format data series should appear. If it doesn't, it will be right click format data series. And you're looking for the graph icon and this series overlap button. All we need to do is spread that all the way to the right, 100%. And now we've got one bar. Those two bars have now overlapped each other. Now what we in effect want is for our minimum bar to be on top of our maximum bar. So it's blocking out that first bit until we get to the first dot. Not quite doing that at the moment because our maximum bar is on top of our minimum bar. So how do we change that round? Well, let's click and click select data. Now the way Excel loads our data is in a specific order. It will order compact cars, then it will put on Dulux cars, then it will add minimum bar, then it will add maximum bar. What we really want it to do is to add the maximum bar first and then the minimum bar. So we can change the order of how these series are being put on. So the minimum bar is the last thing to be loaded on. So therefore it's now on top of the maximum bar. Okay, the colors have changed a bit, but now we get to see what's going on. So now we can change our minimum bar to be a value of white, color of white. In effect, it's now hidden. And our maximum bar can now be a nice gray color pretty much there. A couple of little formatting things we can do. We can remove this bottom axis. We don't need that. We can now rehide our Y axis. We can remove these grid lines as well. We don't need those. And personal preference, I like to make these bars just a little bit thinner. So we can go back to our format data series and we can go to our graph and our gap width of around 300% quite like that. Now all we need to do is a little bit of alignment work just to put our labels in the same line as our data. And now we have it, a connected dot plot. So I did mention at the start, we'd look at a different way of building a connected dot plot. Let's look at that right now. This time we are going to build our connecting line using error bars. We have a column here called gap column E, and this is going to be a very simple formula working out the difference between compact cars and Dulux cars. So it's going to be equals Dulux cars minus compact cars. Let me copy that formula down. And what this will do is allow us to see how much the error bar needs to be, how large the error bar needs to be. Let's click our compact cars data series. And with that selected, we can go to chart design, add chart element, error bars, standard error. And you see we've got this sort of crosshairs error bars appearing. So first of all, we don't need the vertical ones. So we can click on those and delete. So now we can click our error bars and we should be presented with some options. If not, again, you can right click and format error bars. And let's go through these options now. The direction, we want this to be a plus only. Even if it's a negative amount, we still want it to go in a positive direction. The end style, we want no cap. We want to remove that and the error amount. This is where we deal with our calculation. So our custom option is our friend here. We select custom, specify value. And for our positive values, we can select the range here. We can leave negative values out. We don't want the bar to go the opposite way. Click OK and you see the connection has been made. And now we can click on the bars. We can click on the format, the paint bucket tool, and we can make some formatting changes. I'm going to make the width five. I'm going to change the color to a lighter gray. And there we have it. Another way we can connect our dots together. Drop in the comments which way you prefer. Did you prefer setting up the bars or did you prefer the error bars way? Until now, you might have been thinking, why have we got this text box for our category labels? Can't we do something better there? Well, yes, 
We absolutely can. So let's do that now. And we have a column called names. And all we're going to do in names, we're going to put the value of, of one. Now we're going to add some data to our chart again. So right click, select data. We're going to call this data series names. And the X values will be these set of ones. And our Y values will be our category positions. And now if I remove our current text box, you will see we have a set of dots. So those dots are being put at position one along our Y axis. So now we have the data in place. We can label that data. So let's right click, add data labels. And you can see we've got the values 6.5, 5.5. But if we go to format data labels, we've got some options. We can select a value from cells to apply to these data labels. So let's click value from cells. Our data label range comes up and we can now select the categories. Click OK. That gives us our categories and we can now turn off the other elements. And now it's purely formatting. We can make the text slightly larger. We can align it differently, left align, right align. And of course, we can now remove these dots by just filling them with white, no line, changing the marker style, no fill and no line. That now gives us labels which are now dynamic to the data. So if price, for example, changed the cost, our data would immediately reflect it and our chart would do the same. So now we have no need for our text box of category labels. One final bonus tip there for you. Some pros and cons to using dot plots then. So one pro is they use a lot less ink. There's a lot more space to your design. So that means space for extra annotations and maybe some context, but also space to make your designs maybe that little bit more breathable. But you know, do bear in mind that these dot plots are maybe slightly more unusual. So your audience may not be as familiar with them as other chart types. So you may need to explain them more. You may need to spend a little bit more time with your audience going through them. So that's a bit of a trade off there to consider, but certainly they can be very, very useful indeed. So in our time together, we've made two different types of dot plots, a Cleveland dot plot and a connected dot plot. And we've looked at a variation of building a connected dot plot. And we've also looked at making our category labels just that little bit more elegant. Don't forget that like button if you enjoyed what you saw today, as it does help spread our content to a wider audience. And if you'd like to see more from us, hit that subscribe and notification bell as well. We do have other Excel tutorials on this playlist here, along with other videos giving all sorts of tips, tricks and makeovers. So until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.